By the end of this video, you will be an expert at dealing with every single mid ladder deck you come across. And I guarantee you, you will never struggle with these types of decks again as long as you apply what I show you in today's video. And this is going to be the best mid ladder video I have ever made because I'm going out of my way to give you guys the hardest matchups that I came across. And I, I've been um, I've been thinking that I would record for about like an hour maybe. So we're going to, yep, <laughs> if you're seeing this match, Match, this means this is a uh, mid ladder deck so I, I have to re-record this intro every time I face like hoggy Q because we're not putting that in the video <laughs> so this is what we're oh my god okay this is our first target ladies and gentlemen oh my god <laughs> this is, is exactly what we're talking about okay so we have wizard we have um, executioner and we have minion horde as his first three cards played which is just ridiculous but um, I'm just gonna go over my plays and exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing and hopefully you guys can replicate my strategies because I know just watching isn't enough. You kind of have to understand what I'm doing and all of that lovely stuff. So um, I just noticed, I think this guy's name is from like the South Park thing. Timmy, 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 Timmy. Like, <laughs> here's a mother witch too, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll tone it down a little bit. So he has four air counters that we know of. And I'm going to assume that that is probably enough because... Four, you know, normally I would assume three, but four is just ridiculous. So I'm going to just assume he has four. Now, priorities here. I'm barbarianing on the executioner because it's going to do way more damage than the mother witch does, I think, because the mother witch is already pretty low. It's just prioritizing what we're spending our defensive resources on. But yeah, I mean, here we're just going to uh, analyze the situation. We don't have to deal with... Okay. Um, that's just a fireball value. Don't have to deal with a mother witch or a wizard right this instant. So that's kind of the key. Usually I like to go with solo balloons and stuff, um, but that's complicated. Uh, it, it didn't turn out that way in this matchup. Why? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, we got a mirror. Okay, so that's important to keep an eye on. He does have a mirror. Now, this is the thing about these types of decks. They may look nasty. And they are nasty. Don't get me wrong. We're probably not going to break through this guy. We are zapping and fireballing the wizard because that is what's on my balloon. Now, that's the biggest thing. Um, you may... Oh, that sucks. Oh, we could have got that second hit there. But that's the biggest thing for me is when I look at a guy who has four air counters, my biggest worry is how... what Or like, I guess most people's biggest worry as we're using a balloon to counter this minion horde here which i think is the best play because they're we didn't we can't use a fireball in that situation we didn't um it wasn't the right play because we didn't we didn't even have it at the beginning and also we have to save fireball for for like his barbarians and and there's too many things i need to fireball that i can't save it on defense but yeah that's the main question people bring up is what do i fireball when my opponent has four things for me to fireball and for me um it's what is targeting the balloon and now uh, if we're relying on um our balloon to get to a tower maybe to get a little bit of chip damage then we're going to need to uh, be dealing with the um like the wizard there because he was on my balloon and the executioner wasn't um but see right now it's mainly a defensive thing. These guys' decks are really weird. Usually they don't have win conditions. He mirrors that, so we're just going to apply opposite lane pressure because now he's going to have to deal with both lanes. That's just what we're going to do. And as you can see, Skeleton Dragons did a ton of damage here. You've got to remember, these guys are not very good. Okay, you're, you're, you're facing guys playing these types of decks for a reason. They're not very good at this game, so you're going to have a lot of leeway. But that's the main thing is once we get to a certain point in the game where you realize... This guy has four air counters. Damn, I'm not breaking through this guy. You can't let him break through you either. And that's much e much easier done than said. I mean, like, because these guys have no win conditions. So literally all we have to do is not give this guy a counter push. Like, um, see, like the two wizards here is a bit of an issue, but we should be able to clean up pretty much, I think, both of them with that bomb. Oh my gosh. That's the biggest thing here. We are going to make sure our defense is the number one priority. I don't care about breaking through with the lava. My lavas are simply to distract him so that he can't go in for a big push. And so he has to spend elixir on defense. That's the whole reason I'm going with lava. I mean, obviously I'd love to get damage, but let's 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 face it, I'm not going to get damage. This is the biggest thing we're doing here is you can just see he's not getting more damage than me. We got that one balloon connection at the beginning of the game and we played off that for I mean, we, we did get in a little bit more damage, but we kind of played off that for the next five minutes, 
four minutes. It's just how it rolls. So that's a beautiful example against a guy with four freaking air counters. <laughs> so also I'm doing this on the trophy road because it's insanely hard to find mid ladder hard counters that aren't on the trophy road unless you're like in the slums of like 1500 ultimate champion trophies and I'm not going to far fall that low so we're not going to do that but um super raton coming in here and I, I mean if you are seeing this again if you're seeing this this means it's it's in the video so that's a good thing because um I've pretty much I've been going through I'm cutting out all the the ones that aren't mid ladder decks and so we've got an executioner here okay that's nice so it looks like we'll probably keep this one in then unless it's hog xe because I don't really think that's a mid ladder deck so boom balloon opposite lane that's kind of what I'm doing here and you can see there's a reason for that right I can see he is two air counters if he has a third air counter he has a third air counter we'll deal with it we'll make sure we realize what he has and then we'll play off that next time but here we can see that, that the Inferno Tower comes out, the Executioner comes out. Those are both pretty expensive. He doesn't have much Elixir, and he already used two air counters. So the odds of him having enough Elixir and having a third air counter are very, very low. So we're always going to want to take that opposite lane balloon. Now, that's the thing. Uh, a lot of these types of players, they will go with the... God knows why. They will go with four of their air counters on one Lava Hound when one of them would have done the trick. Well, they'll go like two or three of them on the same Lava Hound. It's like, okay, well, I'll just go opposite lane then, right? I mean, that's kind of important to track Elixir as well. You don't need to like, you don't need to be scribbling down notes and like, in like, oh, okay, he just played an Executioner, he has six, now he has uh, seven, now he has eight. Like, you don't need to do that. You know what I'm saying? You just need to be keeping track of cycle. So basically, all that is, my opponent plays an Executioner. Then he played a Lumberjack. He needs three more cards to get rid or to get back to his Executioner. So how am I going to do that? Um, or how am I going to play now that I know he doesn't have Executioner in cycle for another three, four cards? He's still two off his Executioner. And most of these guys have heavy decks as well. Still one off his Executioner. That's just, um, that's just simple. Like, it's just simple. It doesn't, it may take a little bit of practice, but we don't need to do much more than that as far as Elixir tracking in cycle right now. So... Um, you can kind of, you, you can track Elixir if you want. Um, in certain situations, it's important for predictions. Let's say I know I'm going to go Balloon at the bridge and he has Minion Horde. And I'm going to Fireball predict. And then I realize, oh crap, I go to the replay. Why did I miss my Fireball prediction? Oh, he had three Elixir. Like, that's simple. Like, you, you have to be able to, um... Say he nobody's playing anything. He plays an executioner. You know he's at five. You don't need to know his exact amount, but it's simple stuff like okay, he just spent a lot of elixir in one lane, and I don't think he has enough to defend the other lane because that's not how elixir works. You know stuff like that. And again, we're stomping on this guy with a bunch of weird air counters because they don't really know how to play the game. And hopefully we will after watching this. <laughs> And of course, guys, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Um, I will be happy to answer anything that doesn't get addressed in this video. Because hopefully, I mean, hopefully I'll address most of the things. But um, if I can't, then that's um, my fault. And I'll do my best to try and uh, sh like answer those questions. But as far as starting plays go, I don't really like the Barbarian split. But I was kind of feeling it because I didn't really have another play there. Usually, you want to let your opponent make the first play. So do as I say, not as I do I would not start with barbarians first play because then we get into situations like this and it's like okay well oh gee oh my god okay well that wouldn't have mattered anyways this this is what happens when you this is a perfect example of what not to do this right here is why you don't go with the balloon or the barbarian split first play because then you usually lose a tower if your opponent has some like rubbish like this like this what is this what are we what are we playing right now like come on so that's why you don't do it now we're still going to go ahead and win this game. I'll explain to you exactly what my thought process is right now. So he goes barbs in the back. I'm thinking so uh, like we've we've seen the Tesla. We've seen um, giant skelly sparky. So the main thing I'm worried about is if I go lava in the back, how could he punish me? Now, that's why I'm not going to quite go lava in the back when we've got so much stuff on the board already. It's a kind of a rule of thumb when you're going lava. You don't want to go lava when your opponent has stuff on the board that he could use to counter push. Like, if there's an executioner coming down the board, or there's a bowler, maybe a bowler is a better answer. There's a bowler coming down the board. I don't really want to lava into him normally because my opponent's just going to, like, back up his push. And then, um, 
you know, it's going to get kind of nasty from there because then we fall into the trap of how do I play defense and support my lava push? Oh my God, my lava push is dead and he has 14,000 more elixir than I do. What are we going to do? You know, so that's, that's kind of the, the rabbit hole we don't want to fall into. Now here, unfortunately, we will give up a sparky hit, but um, it's kind of what we had to do there. And even if, you know, I know we have an overleveled fireball, even if we have... If, even if or not not over leveled fireball he has an under leveled little prince even if he had enough elixir there he's not going to be able to defend that and as you can see he's shown no big spell and no other air counter other than the dark goblin so this is exactly why we just did this i mean like it's pretty simple it's really simple no big spell no second air counter so we just go ahead and do that that's that's it now i wanted to address quickly about the last game, uh, or uh, the last thing I put in the video, because the last game was Hoggy Q again. So, oh my God, please tell me this isn't Hoggy Q. I don't want to cut this out. Um. Anyways, I mean, I'll just go ahead and say, I mean, about the last game, I, I kind of want to go more in depth into why exactly, or why exactly um, we talked about how Barbarian Split was bad. But basically, um, you can see why I don't want you to Barbarian Split. On top ladder, it's okay because they usually, you know, their decks and you know they can't punish you um, for going barbarian split in the back. That's why people won't do it. Um, but basically, stuff. That, my problem is like if I go lava into a win condition, that's probably my main main issue. Of course, we got a mega knight here. Uh, we're actually gonna show you how to full counter this with the tombstone. But um, the mega minions, obviously, just playing it just in case he has like yeah, okay. So in case he has something like that that he uses to kill the tombstone, the mega minion will prevent him from getting any damage. But yeah, if I go lava into a, a giant, okay, and then he goes graveyard, and I try and defend the graveyard with barbs. All he has to do is go minions or bats on my lava, and the lava's dead. And so I just fed him four elixir, a bunch of damage, and I am just down. Elixir and damage. So, like, that's exactly why I don't want you to go lava into stuff like that. Stuff like, like, sometimes it's different. Like, the lava into a knight or something is different. Because that's like, that's like something you can kill easy. That's not like a giant or a golem or something, you know? Um, but here, as you can see, this is how we steamroll people. We get positive elixir trades like that Mega Knight, uh, Meg, or Tombstone Mega Minion to defend a Mega Knight Poison. That's how you get damage. Because you're going to be able to zapping instantly on the bats. This is just easy. It's just easy Clash Royale because you're going to be able to farm positive elixir trades off of these crappy players. Like, that's genuinely just what happened. Facing off against Trib here, and that, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest thing is these players will give you positive elixir trades, so take them. Um, you're going to try and defend try and defend things with troops if possible. Save your spells for offense. Try and defend things with troops and counter push with these troops because that way you're going to be able to defend things so much easier or get damaged so much easier, you know? And, uh, oh... Oh my god, oh my god, I can't believe I did that. I really can't believe I did that. Okay, well, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to realize that this is hopeless, and we are not defending this E-Giant, and it wouldn't be worth it because even if I went Skelly Drags, I may or may not have saved the tower. And we're down a billion damage again. Okay, so, um, here's the plan. He has, he has Firecracker, right? He has a Cannoneer Tower. It's going to be a little more tricky to get balloons through. He has Valk Guards E-Giant. So what I'm worried about is the... Honestly, I'm not really worried. I mean, that that only happened because I botched my defense, right? So we're just going to go ahead and, and lava over here. And then we can realize that I can probably use Barb to counter this E-Giant, right? So um, it's not a big deal here. Um, we get two Mega Minion Slaps. We just use barbs um, because he hasn't shown anything that can kill our barbs or even distract our barbs. Uh, ooh, ooh, magic archer. Um, that actually helps because that might even... Oh, yeah, it does. It distracts the magic archer. That's kind of crazy. I like that a lot. But basically, I mean, you kind of realize that, that coming back against these guys is really easy when you realize, you know, what they're playing. So I, I just, you know, I kind of blundered. I shouldn't have even been down to begin with, but um, that's kind of what happens. I mean, he has E-Giant, Firecracker, 
It's just some random bum E giant deck. <laughs> um, it's probably a way better matchup than most of the the decks we've seen today, though. So that's a bit unfortunate. It's probably one of the easier ones. I'm trying to give you guys hard matchups, but we're just gonna mess around in Tombstone here because I don't want my Skelly Drags and my push to get stalled by this E giant. So here. I didn't need to fireball that. Um, that was the whole reason I pulled the E-Giant away so I wouldn't have to fireball that. That was just a, a brain fart, a muscle memory move to just fireball that. But, uh, oh, he didn't get... Oh, this is going to get nasty really quickly. Um, yeah, so basically why I pulled it over there is because I knew that it was going to allow my Skeleton Dragon to help out against the Magic Archer so I could fireball the Firecracker, except I just, like, fell asleep at the wheel and didn't fireball the firecracker which is the entire reason i went with that play to begin with so i was just stupid i don't know why i did that but that was a good tombstone and that's the reason i did that is because when we're in a situation where um usually you always want to go opposite lane against e-giant right because they you don't want to let them go e-giant into your push because it just kills your whole push and turns into their push but um, in situations where we have to, like this situation, stuff like that helps out if you want to get your troops onto their defenses. All right, so we got like Krek. Um, he's going to give us a good luck. We'll give him a good. We'll give him a good little mic drop, and uh, it is going to be log. I mean, I don't want to say log bait yet because it's just the goblin barrel. It could be hog rider goblin barrel. Who knows? But um, in case it is log bait. Um, I know log bait is one of the toughest matchups at top ladder. It's nearly impossible, but you guys are going to be able to, looks like log bait, beat log bait players from all different levels. I think you're going to be able to beat log bait, um, especially if they're not like a top 1000 player, you're going to be able to beat log bait, um, which is popular, but you're not going to be facing the greatest log bait players. So basically the whole strategy, which only works against like players who aren't really good. You kind of want to overwhelm them um, with 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 either lava skeleton dragons or lava balloon, force them to rocket, and then you're going to so like I don't know why he's not rocketing. Uh, this doesn't make sense to me. Um, you're supposed to usually all the good players will rocket here. It's not really I don't know why he didn't rocket. We're going to take his whole tower, but I mean that's what's going to happen. So that's what's going to happen. So basically, you go barbarians in front of your lava push um when he has inferno tower and then you fireball this princess or you go lava and then skeleton dragons and then barbs the opposite lane uh you only want to go evo barbs if you're going opposite lane or go balloon opposite lane the whole thing you're doing is either using evo barbs or balloon opposite lane of your lava push to make him freak out and start defending both lanes and he's gonna mess up that's how it works Valdsin giving us the e-barb titty emote. You already know this is going to be great. Pekka in the back first play. I know this is going to be scuffed. Pekka in the back first play. There's no way that this is anything resembling normal, bro. There's no way. We're just going to we're just going to play support troops into this cuz he's probably going to try and back up his Pekka. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to try and back it up with a Mega Knight, bro. <laughs> what are we doing here? Really? Really? We're going to Pekka Mega Knight the first two plays of the game? Are you for real? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly, it probably won't get much weirder than that. I mean, Pekka Mega Knight's pretty weird already, so probably won't get much too much stranger. Oh my god, that's a mirrored Mega Knight. <laughs> We're going to use the anti-Mega Knight tombstone placement here, but my god. His first three cards have been a Pekka and two Mega Knights. That's actually ridiculous, dude. <laughs> Pekka and two Mega Knights as his first three cards is crazy. Okay, so we're going to... oh. Sadly, I do not have any more tricks up my sleeve to deal with the e-barbs. <laughs> this guy's elixir deck is like 6.3, bro. His cost is 6.3 elixir. I so unfortunately have to give up my tower to these e-barbs. And of course, bro. I'm genuinely concerned for this guy's well-being. Like, your first five cards are all five elixir or more. That is ridiculous, dude. Like, like I, I actually don't... This guy averages like three cards a minute. That's actually insane. But, like, we had to tower trade off the e-barbs because I didn't have anything there. And so, basically, it's looking great for me because I already had damage up on one tower. So, a tower trade for me was like, hey, you know what? We're just going to be in the same spot as we were before, except now I have even more damage because my Mega Minion is literally him. Um, I'm going to pause on a Lava for just a second. Actually, Double Elixir is hitting, so we're not going to pause. In single, I wouldn't Lava there. He's going to go Mega Knight here and... Uh, 
Okay, well this should be oh. Oh, okay. I was not I was not ready for that. I was not ready for that. Oh, oh Jesus, he's freezing it? Really? Really? You you're not gonna freeze the You're gonna freeze the the barbarians? I don't really understand that. I really I don't I don't quite understand that play. I really don't. I got a little scared for a second there, but like dude, this is like like He hasn't even played all his cards, has he? Am I tripping? All right. Well, anyways, I mean that was the mid ladder video for you. Um, we ended it with Mega Knight Pekka E Barb's Executioner. It's kind of weird, but I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Make sure you like, uh, like the like the video. Let me know if you guys enjoyed it. Um, anything I can help you with in the comments, let me know, and uh, I'll see you guys. Oh my God, we get to the Pancakes Arena. Hell yeah.